Good morning, and welcome to worship at Greens Farms Church. It's Palm Sunday, and typically we're handing out these in church, but not this year. To honor the request to shelter at home, we're holding worship online, and later our palms will be placed outside on the lawn as part of a grand Easter display. Might want to check it out. Today we're blessed with music from Rick Tripodi and our four section leaders who made a special appearance earlier and recorded not one, but two traditional pieces for the start of Holy Week. And consulting theologian, the Reverend Dr. Alan Hilton joins us once again from Austin, Texas. Let's share a Palm Sunday moment as Alan compares our willingness to follow the crowd wherever it goes to the way Jesus focuses on getting to the cross, even if it means going it alone. But first, let's pray. On this day, O God, your son Jesus entered Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread garments and palm branches, shouting Hosanna. Help us to welcome him today with expectation, that same joy, that same hope. May he abide with us and we with him. For this we ask in the name of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Kids nowadays, their attention spans are the size of a squirrel's attention span. Something shiny comes up and suddenly they're veered off in that direction. 128 characters for Twitter, one minute for TikTok length. Kids nowadays, if you're in middle school, your approval rating rises and falls by the minute and that doesn't exactly shut down by high school, this technological age of children lives moment to moment and news cycles span about 30 seconds, it seems. Try to keep their attention longer than five minutes. But wait a second. Commercials have gotten shorter. Television shows have gotten shorter. Campaign speeches have gotten shorter. Maybe it's not just the kids. Maybe, maybe it's this whole generation. After all, we have made it so that your so 37 seconds ago is a cultural fixture. You and I follow the stock market up and down, the, the approval rating of the president up and down on the basis of a tweet here or an interview there or a press conference here or there. Maybe it's not just the kids. Maybe it's our whole doggone generation. Well, I don't know, friends, if it's consolation or discouragement, but in terms of the ups and downs of our own affections, when you and I can't seem to fix ourselves in one place when we are hot and cold and when, when our emotions run us back and forth, the apple 
of our generation isn't falling far from the human family tree. Anybody who has read the Holy Week story knows this, right? I'm going to read a little bit from that blessed Sunday that we now celebrate, April 5th, 2020. We're going to go back to the one around 30 AD and watch Jesus enter the city of Jerusalem with loud acclaim coming from enthusiastic crowds. When they were approaching Jerusalem, Jesus and the disciples at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you'll find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! And then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve friends. At this moment, on the Sunday that starts Holy Week, Jesus' approval rating is through the roof. After all, from the time he was in Galilee straight through to the time he enters in Jerusalem, he is Elvis and Tiger Woods. Everyone in the world wants to follow around behind him. His crowds are huge, and even when he gets to the big city, his crowd continues to be huge. He'll, he'll live out Sunday and then Monday, and his crowds will swell so much that his opponents won't be able to counter him effectively because they fear the crowds. The, the popularity level is high, and Tuesday it grows some more, and then Wednesday you can imagine these disciples who have been with him from the beginning who are just thinking, we're on the rise. We're the next thing we're going to take over. We get to sit right and left in Jesus' kingdom. They are excited. They are fully in. And then comes Thursday. And you and I know what happens on Thursday. They have a nice little supper, the Passover feast. They celebrate it. They sing some songs. But during, during the meal, Jesus says a couple of strange things. He says, one of you is going to betray me and one of you is going to deny me three times and they have no clue what he's talking about because all in is the two word phrase they would use to describe themselves. They are Jesus people. In fact, when he tells Peter, one of you will deny me, in fact, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows, Peter says, never would I ever do that. Popularity, straight through, dinner on Thursday night. But then they go to a garden, and after prayer, soldiers come because Judas brought them. And those soldiers come up to gather Jesus in. And it says that in the ruckus, in the fight, in the chase, all of the disciples forsake him and flee. Later by the palace, where the, where the high priest gathers the council to try Jesus, to put him on trial there in Jerusalem. Peter stands outside and a little slave girl scares the bejesus out of him. He denies Jesus once, twice, three times. So Judas has left the fold. Peter has left the fold. Every one of the disciples has forsaken him and fled. On Sunday morning, the women who hear the news of the resurrection are going to run away and tell no one because they are afraid. Friends, everybody was bullish on Sunday. Everybody was in on Monday. The swelling crowds, the popularity, the, the 
He's the in thing. Jesus had people until he didn't have people. And the change was as sudden as a one-minute TikTok or a tweet or the movement of the markets or the movement of the president's favorability rating. It turns out that our short attention spans have a match in the inconstancy that run around the chaos of the disciples' move from all in to all out. It almost gives us whiplash. But you know and I know that after that fateful Thursday night of inconstancy, after the, the insiders have become outsiders on their own, after that leaving, Jesus goes to the cross alone. And you and I search ourselves and ask ourselves, why do we deny? Why do we betray? Why do we, and this is the old saying that, that apathy is worse than hatred, why do we just ignore this Jesus why is it that our lives, our beams, our constancy, our, our focus waves in and out in our Christianity? Why is it that we can be so in at a worship service or at a baptism or at a wedding or even at a, a memorial service? Why is it that we can be so in while we're in the devotional chair or while we're listening to Christian music or while we're in and then so out so away, so wandering. Why is it that we are so like these disciples who give us whiplash in Holy Week? I don't have an answer today. I don't have an answer for our inconstancy. It's got to be partly the human condition. It's got to be partly the difficulty of focus. But whatever it is, as we run through that Holy Week once again, as we move through those familiar days, that Sunday of palms and glory, and Monday and Tuesday as Jesus faces down the Jewish leaders, and Wednesday into Thursday as the tide starts to turn, and Thursday night when feet are washed, but then the disciples abandon, and then Friday as Jesus walks on, alone as we walk it again it's not a bad idea for us to remember again our inconstancy and in that moment of remembering look for the only one in that picture who has remained true jesus started the week and ended the week the same determined committed Love the world, Savior, straight through. He was fixed on a, on a donkey's colt on Sunday. He was fixed in opposition to the temple's abuses on Monday. He was fixed in answering the array of testing questions on Tuesday. He was fixed even as he ate with disciples and loved them when he knew they were going to let him down on Thursday. He was fixed through a trial when abuse was being hurled at him. He was fixed through the tortures of soldiers and the, and the, the barbs of a crowd who watched him hung on a Roman tree. He was fixed. Luke has it that he set his face for Jerusalem and never turned. And so in Mark's Gospel, we read of a Jesus who's on the cross experiencing God-forsakenness for us. It's hard to describe why he's there. He's there partly because of the jealousy of some Jewish leadership establishment in Jerusalem. He's there partly because of the fickleness of a Roman governor named Pilate. He's there partly because of the, the destined plan of God for redemption. It's all this convergence, but he's there. He's fixed. He's constant when you and I are not. And Friday comes, and Jesus is crucified. 
every year we face this Sunday Friday change and every year we vow it's not going to happen to me just as adamantly as Peter vowed that he would never deny Jesus but as we stand before the cross this year as we stand forlorn before the dying Christ it's time to let our gratitude sink in a gratitude for the constant one the one who doesn't waver the one who doesn't go up and down the one who is steadily ours and steadily for us how great is that they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus's cross with Simon of Cyrene the father of Alexander and Rufus and then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. But when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani! which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders heard it. They, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran mockingly, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry, and he breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing Jesus, saw that in this way he breathed his last breath, the centurion said, Truly this man was God's son. Friends, believe the good news. When you and I are inconstant and riding our roller coasters of attention span, of devotion, of focus, of constancy, when we are inconstant, the one who loves us, loves us still, all the way to death on a cross. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. May our gratitude swell as we walk these steps. Will you pray with me? Our God, you are our rock. You are our fortress. You are our deliverer. And never were you more, more that that in that moment when you in Christ went all the way to the cross for us, we want you to deliver us from our inconstancy. We want you to help us to have attention spans that keep you in focus and keep devotion in motion for ourselves. But right now we just pause to marvel at the one who went to the cross for us. 
right now, we just pause and realize that we wave pal when we wave palms on Sunday and shout derision on Friday, you love us still. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Friends were living at both ends of the whiplash, here at home and in the events of Holy Week. Join us as our walk continues this Thursday at 8 p.m. for our traditional service of Tenebrae. Check out our website for more information or find us on Facebook or Instagram. Until then, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen and amen.